This is Podcast Episode 23, Excuse Thyself. On Saturday, June 11th, 2016, and now, actually, I'm slightly okay with it. This episode of Podcast is hosted by Brandon Johnson, Brian Mitchell, and Ryan Rampersad. This episode has show notes at thenexus.tv slash PK23. Oh, hi, guys. Hello. Oh. So, sounds like it might be time for another podcast. It is. I think so. Right on. Well, it's been a little while since we've uh, since we've last chatted, but I think there's some cool stuff going on. Um, first off, I think as we mentioned before, Ryan has a new blog, doesn't he? Well, it's getting there. I will have a new blog very soon. Still working on the, the actual content. I want to get the content first and then you know it takes five minutes to put files up now gotcha gotcha okay yeah so what i wanted to talk about for the new blog is how i'm approaching it so yeah for sure so when you actually go to that link right now blogs.ryanrampersad.com slash whatever nothing's there yet but it will be there eventually but so as you probably know i've had multiple blogs before so I have my current blog, which I don't use at all, and I had the blog before that, which is the Chronicles blog now. Mm-hmm. And the the uh, the problem with that is every time I make a new blog, I have to make a new subdomain, and you know it's it's just full of suffering mm-hmm. making subdomains. So my new approach is to just use this blog's subdomain, and anytime I want a new blog, just make a new directory under it. That sounds okay. awesome. And store the blog in there. It's going to be great. For sure. Nice. And this way, they're all protected by the same cert. So I don't have to do all that work. Because right now, when you click blogs at ryanrepresent.com slash pseudo, you get an SSL or a certificate error. And yeah. then if you approve it, then it takes it to adept.work. Which is, makes no sense. I don't understand <laughs> why that's the case. I don't I don't know what's going on there. Cool, but that's not right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's to your own stuff. Yeah. Right. It's, it's at least it's not going to yahoo.com. Um, so what I'm going to be putting on the pseudo blog, the first entry is there will be two things. First one is about spring data rest and spring data rest is a cool spring package for Java to make a very simple, but, but good enough, um, restful API. And um, one of the problems that I think we talked about last time was how hard it is to find good documentation with also good, fleshed out, realistic, real world examples for for these kinds of things. You know, if I search for something on GitHub, it's the same thousand people following the same tutorial and it's useless. Mm -hmm. So this way, people will have a real example full of, you know, real content. It'd be great. Right. Um... Yeah. My second post will be about Spring integration with Maven, NPM, and Gulp, because we have a lot of JavaScript in our project at work, and we need all of the Gulp we can get. Absolutely. Did I'm I... really looking forward to that one in particular, because those are all tools yeah. that I've used, but I'm always interested to hear about how other people, and particularly other cool people like yourself and the people you work with, uh, are integrating that into your workflows. So I am watching intently for when those will be posted yeah looking, looking yeah forward to it. we might even have to have another post even on and on how, what the reception to that that is because right now we just use maven as you know mm-hmm. maven is sort of the build tool and package manager all in one right and uh well it, and while that's great and there are ways to integrate gulp and, and npm into maven it has um you know various phases of compilation that you can hook into mm-hmm. um yeah. Basically, what I'm going to force people to do is install Node on their local machine and on sort of, you know, wherever we end up deploying, sort of, kind of. Not really, mm-hmm. though. And then they will also have to install NPM, Gulp, and, you know, all the you know all the things, just like everybody else. Mm-hmm. And they'll have to also open an additional terminal window to have Gulp watch running. Mm-hmm. So they're going to they're gonna love what it gets them, but they're going to hate having to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're gonna love VS six. I I have yet to really work with that, and I really need to start soon. <laughs> that is true. ES six is 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 pretty neat. I've done a couple projects with it so far. You know the um, uh, the string interpolation and the <laughs> shortcut for making functions. It changes your life. Yep. 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 Lambda functions are pretty neat. Lambda. Mm-hmm. So Brandon, I heard that you're working somewhere new. 
I am. I am. It's sort of a secret, but it's sort of not really a secret at all because it's in my Twitter bio. Uh, I <laughs> am an engineering intern at a place called Space 150. Uh, they are in Minneapolis. It is a very cool place. Um, one of their claims to fame is that they change their uh, entire like identity every 150 days. Of course, they keep the name and the location um, because that would be a little bit super intense if they changed their name and, and, and their location every uh, 150 days. That, well. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if if you want to learn more about what they do in broad scopes, uh, you can check out their website because it's, it's pretty neat for that. Um, so I've, I've I started working a little while ago, and one of the things that I really uh, appreciate about it is on day one when I started working on some projects, um, they have this really awesome boilerplate CSS tool that is open source, um, and it's called SpaceBase. It's even on Bower. Uh, and like when when you walk into the door at a place and they're like, oh yeah, look, we've got we've got our own Bower package that has the the uh, basics for how to set up uh, the front end uh, or, the, or the styles of your application. That's pretty gosh darn neat. So I I am I am geeking out and it is awesome. Um, so if you're looking for a thing like that, you might actually find that useful. That is I pretty cool. Yeah, oh, check it out. Yeah. And then uh, finally, because they're uh, kind of a digital agency that does a lot of cool um, and neat stuff like that, if there's anything I work on that uh, becomes a public thing and I can I can show you, I will do so, much like Ryan has. Great. Um, because it is it is a cool, um, it's really awesome to be able to, to share that kind of stuff with the universe. Um, there are also lots of cool people doing cool stuff uh, there too. So as that as that stuff comes out, I will I will let you know. Nice. So how long have you been there now? uh five days well that's a long okay. time <laughs> was it a good first yeah. week yeah oh no it was awesome um i've already i uh, worked on a couple of different projects um and uh ne next week i'll be i'll be hopping onto a, a, a different project which will be quite neat and i'll be uh shipping uh another application so that should be that should be uh pretty neat uh i'm doing a little bit of rail stuff uh and then moving on to some other stuff that it like uh, GL shader language and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be intense. Some cute computer vision stuff maybe. Um, cool. We'll have to see. We'll have to see what the nature of that is once once I get assigned to more projects. Cool. Um, yeah. Nice. So Ryan, I know that you went to Open Source Snow Earth. I was unable to to go there because this is my first week of that internship and yeah. everything was like. I know. What, what, what is a what is a human resources? We, we all to... we all missed you at Open Source North. I know I felt so awful about it too because our, Randall, one of my good friends from JavaScript Minnesota, is is there and was attending on behalf of the meetup. Yep. And as I kind of surreptitiously um, joined Space, um, he he was like, "Well, who's going to hang out with me at OSN then?" And I'm like, "I don't know. I'm sorry, Randall." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Person, but... I did say hi to them though. That's over, good. Over there at the JavaScript booth. Did he have someone else over there? Yeah, there was another person, but I don't know that guy's name. Oh, that's good. Was it uh, Robert, the bald guy? It's no, really awesome. no, it wasn't him. Oh, well, anyhow, continue. How yeah. was it? Well, I went to Open Source North, and I provided links here uh, to a few things. Uh, apparently not the thing that I was supposed to provide a link to, so that's funny. I'll put it in later. So I, I have a link here to Open Source North so you can read more about it. But basically, it's a um, a large convention sort of meetup, but it's also a conference. And the way it works is... They have a bunch of booths for people to talk to their sponsors because sponsors generate money, I guess. I hear that's what they do. <laughs> and um, then you also have five session blocks of time where there are four to five sessions scheduled for each time section. And I went to five of them, of course, one for each section. There's also some time in the middle for lunch. And so I thought it was really great to, ex uh, you know, great experience to attend uh, this is my first real conference, so that was pretty cool. Uh, you know, I'm not the I'm not a people person, but it was really fun to be with all these people who like things that I like, and who were all fairly interested in the topics. Uh, it was also really cool to talk to the sponsors and stuff. So Microsoft was there, and um, you know there were some other things that I wrote about, like the uh, nerdery. The nerdery, nerdery was there. Uh, Olson was there also, so that was pretty cool. Right on. Uh, yeah. So Ooh. and 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 they also had this bingo card approach. So one of the reasons to get you to go and talk to the sponsors was to fill out your bingo card. And if you f submitted a completely full bingo card of stickers or stamps, 
you would get you could win a thing you could win a thing and the thing right was on. either a surface pro 4 or a macbook pro nice and, and and so i um did not win the macbook pro or the surface pro 4 oh no so next time. next time i guess but but so i i i was in a number of sessions so i went to the java uh, javascript web token talk that was pretty cool um i went to the angular 2 and typescript building enterprise applications talk that was not good and let me tell you why the guy was from microsoft does that does that sum it up is that enough <laughs> No, okay, so the the talk was very dry, very boring. I don't think he had really re- rehearsed it all. I don't really knew, know if he knew where he was going. And because he was um, <coughs> Microsoft Shield, <coughs> um, because he was so Microsoft and client, he was, of course, on Windows using uh, PowerPoint. And that's not really what I wanted to see. Mm-hmm. And the slides were boring. He was boring. It was all boring. And then he got to the demo, and let's say let's say um, you knew that you wanted to attend the talk, yeah. Building enterprise applications with Angular two and TypeScript, wouldn't you like Google Angular two and TypeScript before going there? You know, maybe peruse the tutorial that's provided. Yeah. You know, presumably. You know, yeah. just brush up so that you'd be more familiar with the terms because you're building enterprise applications, right? You're not building a tutorial. Well, it turns out, Mr. Microsoft provided. A tutorial. Literally, he read through the tutorial on the Angular website. Oh no! Oh yeah! <laughs> That's a very TypeScript thing to do. I feel. Ooh, haha! <laughs> <laughs> so it was, um, you know, kind of sad that that particular talk was as bad as it was. The others later in the day were better. Although um, I went to the um, React JS talk, and yeah. it was really strong at first. And then during the demo, it all fell apart because the guy got lost and didn't know really what he was talking about when anybody asked him questions. The, um, I don't, I don't, I, a salt stack guy, that was pretty cool. It right just on. isn't something I needed to really know about. Mm-hmm. Uh, salt stack is for deploying configurations across many devices, like a huge geographical area worth of devices. Really cool, really cool technology. Just it's not something that I need or will ever need, right? Um, yeah. And then the last talk I went to was about MongoDB. Really cool because the guy who gave the talk actually works for Mongo. That is awesome. And is it, his name Kevin? Uh, I don't know what his name was. What? But did he say that MongoDB was web scale? <laughs> no, he did not say that. <laughs> is is MongoDB web scale though? I'm not a hundred percent sure. I it, think we should. No, 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 it has to be. <laughs> uh. So here I'm, I'm looking at the schedule just to make sure, just to see if, who who it was. Um, Matt, because I know a a Morris love named Kevin who works at MongoDB. Oh, presenter Matt. Okay, I don't know who that is. Matt that. Callen was my presenter. Huh. Okay. Uh, MongoDB is place. cool, but when should I use it? Now, of course, after that presentation, I can testify to you that I literally have no idea when to use MongoDB. I did learn about it. I understand what it is what it is and when I might use it, but I still don't know. Like I don't I probably wouldn't use it myself. Yeah. Yeah. I I feel like for me it's kind of like SQLite but SQLite for bigger. Um, yeah. 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 SQL heavy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh. SQLite Pro. <laughs> Kind of, yeah, because it's it's nice for when an app is smallish, but big enough that you want something more than something that h- hangs out on disk with you. Well, he was demonstrating how how nice it is for Mongo to scale in terms of you 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 go through the Mongo server and then you can behind that server put as many services as you want to shard and split and collate the data in That's various true. ways. And it and it happens all automatically without the application layer knowing at all. Hmm. That's true. That is pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. But no, but you can do that with a regular database like MySQL anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's cool that the NoSQL databases are getting there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is really great. And uh, you know, he he made a big deal about how Mongo isn't NoSQL; it's Mongo. Yeah. I mean, 
the yeah. fun thing about no sequel is that no sequel is just anything that doesn't use sequel. Right. Oh, well, you could but still use sequel with Mongo. That's true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's true. Um, but... he, he also mentioned a cool things, and I don't know what it what it means, but for 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 some purpose, they decided to use the schema engine of Postgres and oh, really? use that as a proxy <laughs> so that tools that understand how to interface with Postgres can yeah. interface with Mongo. Interesting. Yeah. That is that is a really kind of neat way to think of it. Mm-hmm. Um, BI, what is what could BI stands for? Business intelligence, like o- OBIE, like Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise Edition? Sure, why not? Uh, probably BI, yeah. Or business intelligence, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. Okay, yeah. well, appar- cool apparently BI. all the BI tools support Postgres schemas. Yeah, mm. so that's like, um, that's got to be like uh, Oracle Business Intelligence, uh, Microsoft Power BI, uh, what else? Can you guys tell that I that I've done some enterprise stuff at some point, like I, data warehouses? Yeah, yeah. I see. I, I try to stay away from the enterprise because it's evil. <laughs> yeah, they're they're enterprisey stuff. Data warehouse. Yeah. Data warehouse so I like guess fun. the idea is that that instead of supporting Mongo, let's just support Postgres, and Mongo will take care of supporting Postgres. Mm. Pretty cool. So yeah, overall, Open Source North was pretty cool. Um, would I go again? Yeah, probably not. Probably not. It was good to go, but there isn't like I. I feel like if I wanted to know about the things they talked about, I probably could have just read stuff online faster. Yeah, yeah. That's how I guess that's the nature of talks and conferences. Indeed. But it sounds like it was fun anyhow. It was fun to go. Like, you know, this is the, th- the stepping stone to the next, you know, Google I.O. or WWDC or Oracle World. That's true. <laughs> Oracle World. I'm not going to <laughs> Oracle World. See, I, I know a number of people who do enjoy uh, enjoy Oracle World and who've gone a couple times. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's not my scene. It's really not. No. No, it is. There is a spring conference, incidentally, in Las Vegas in August. Yeah. So I Which guess uh, it's the Spring One platform. Oh, interesting. That would be cool to go to. Uh, maybe, maybe you can talk with with all their uh, all the people who do the documentation. I mean, oh what? wait, wait, wait. Yeah. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> what documentation? Where Just did you find, where, with, uh... where did you find the docs? Yeah. Good question. Hmm. Yeah, but you know, DevRel is a big thing, and that's one of the things that I really like about Signal, the the essentially the only conference I've ever been to. Yeah, uh, is that like all their DevRel folks are everywhere, mm-hmm. and every one of them is amazing, and I like to high five them repeatedly. Uh, <laughs> and they're kind of like, "Who's this kid?" <laughs> but it's okay, Mister Enthusiasm. Yep, that is me. When I was at when I was at Open Source North, there there was a plug for Twilio and the the thing they released, the scriptable. Um, SIM card stuff. Oh my gosh, that's going to be so amazing! I'm going to see if I can unlock mine and use mine in a um, in a Wi-Fi device. Yeah, because I prefer that uh, very much so over uh, over regular Timo. Mm-hmm. And who knows? Maybe if I can configure the the SIM card correctly, it'll actually get Wi-Fi for the first time. Yes, or not Wi-Fi, LTE for the first time. Very uh, good. Because it's been stuck on 2G since Ugh. I purchased it. Yeah. Womp womp. Mm-hmm. That's cool that there was a plug for them. That's that's really neat. Those yeah. folks, they're, they're cool folks. They are. Okay, well, so you know what happens on Monday? Uh, let's <gasps> dun, see. Dun, dun. Is it the what? No, uh, it's Wednesday. Okay. It's not. It is not Java Oracle World. <laughs> oh, okay. I know that's. I know I just brought that up, but it is not that. Oh right, right. Is it uh, Build? Is it Microsoft Build? <laughs> build. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, it's WWDC. Yes. That's right. uh, at the Moscow Pony Center. They, they well, the keynote isn't there. The keynote's at uh, the other place. Uh, the, auditorium. The, the Bill Graham Auditorium. Not to be confused with the Billy Graham Auditorium, which is something very different <laughs> yeah, it in turns that out. it doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's some rumors about what might be released. Uh, Apple recently went ahead and last week uh, announced that they're going to be adding ads in searches, the App Store uh, have been increased App Store reveal times, which has been in place for the last couple weeks, and uh, changes to subscriptions in the App Store. D- 
these changes are, are really cool. Yeah, I, I'm uh, I'm a fan of them. I think ads will hopefully help developers and not just be big players. We will see what happens. The mm. review times are excellent. Um, and subscriptions, uh, after one year, will offer higher or 85%, 15% instead of the 70-30 split for revenue to the developer after a right. year of paying subscription. So that should help developers out a bit. For sure, for sure. I'm particularly looking forward to hearing about how they uh, how they brought App Store review times uh, so significantly uh, down. Down. Yeah, that is that, is, that is the mystery, isn't it? I think yes. um, Gruber asked uh, Phil Schiller if or some more information on it, and Phil just said um, automation changes, policy changes, and staffing changes. So Interesting. he didn't really want to touch on it any more than that. That makes so sense. I don't, know, I don't know if we we will really find out, but I don't nah, think we'll, I'm sure. I, I don't think we'll find out through an official source, but I'm sure we'll find out eventually. Yeah, that's true. I, I'm sure they they've got to have like what I would love as as somebody who develops stuff occasionally. Um, I would love some way to get in on whatever automated uh, testing they use for it. Something yep. like Sauce Labs, if you if you remember yep. Ryan from that JavaScript yep. sort of talk. Yep. Uh, because I, I tested out Sauce, Sauce Labs and it was awesome. It's way too expensive for me, but it's really awesome. Well, you, you at know, some point I will the, work for um, a place that will purchase it. I'm trying to think of what they would call their internal tool for that, but so I'm sure I'm sure they have you know an array of all their products. They just send the 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 package to the 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 app file, and then it just goes and runs. And if it crashes on any of them, booted. Uh, and I'm sure they have like statistics and diagnostics so they can do stuff too. And I'm sure they also have a fuzzer. Right, right, right. But I I would love to just be able to see. Uh, at the same level they do, or not not necessarily at the same level, but to have access to that same kind of tool, that would yep. be amazing. I think I know they're never going to do that. But very cool. It. People would exploit that though and try and hide stuff in apps, and that's if they true. run it. That's true, but I, f- I feel like it doesn't necessarily even need to be because, like, if people if people exploit it in the same like, yeah, I mean if. What's the difference between somebody exploiting the app review pr- process and exploiting the same sort of testing system that the app review process employs? I don't know. <laughs> if if a bulk of the the app review is handling is handling the automation, then if they can exploit that, then they can more or less get anything on the app store. That's true. So if they if they have a reliable place to replicate it, they can run it tons and tons on their own without causing an alarm for Apple. That. That's true, but I bet I bet they'd have some sort of fail to ban thing set up, just like just like they probably already do for uh, for uh, app store submissions. Yeah, I guess like even if I could get even if as an as a iOS developer, I could get that same the, that same sort of info in app review back. Like I guess that's what I'm asking for. I'm asking for app review. App review exists, so I'm asking for nothing. <laughs> well then, I you know I I think I also read somewhere that they said, well you know we'll we'll trust developers. We know more. So if mm-hmm. if you you're you're a known developer, you're going to be pushed further in the process than you would otherwise, and that oh, makes perfect sure. sense. Yeah, for sure. So what do you think about the subscriptions? I think that that'll be neat. I don't I don't purchase any subscriptions through uh, through iOS, and part part of it is because of that. So anything that I subscribe to either has a a thirty percent fee hike if I were to get it through iOS. Um, or through it through an in-app purchase, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but I think I think the only thing that's like a recurring charge is my overcast patronage, um, but I don't really care about that because that's Marco and I figure he's all sorted it out already. But I guess yeah. like other things I could think of that I do subscribe to that I don't handle through iOS would be stuff like Spotify or um, yeah, I guess like Spotify's it, like Amazon Prime. Right, like, but Amazon would never do Prime through right. because that would be no. Yeah. So, so I awful. guess I guess the real question is, what would you be willing to pay regularly for, but not just be willing to buy the app for? And I don't even know if I mean you specifically, but just you as in people. That's a good question. Well, I think the the point of subscriptions is for reoccurring media that's being constantly up, updated. So. Media, you know, TV, movies makes is a classic or music classic example. 
people have been talking, I heard on Connected or over or ATP about, um, you know, an app like Tweetbot being for a subscription. However, but why? Like the, the rules doesn't... are kind of fuzzy. So it's easier to, you know, if you every year have to download a new whole app for, you know, Tweetbot 5 coming out, I don't know, this fall, if that happens, right. you have to relog in everything. It's easier if you can just have another annual fee subscription update and then that that's out. true but i don't so like don't, sure so, so like sure for a year that's fine okay but you know that like apps will of course abuse the horrible like oh every other month every month kind of thing and it's gonna be wonderful yeah. so for me when i think of tweetbot i'm okay just you know buying a thing for a year and just getting the next one that's okay for me yeah. i don't like subscriptions uh I, I also kind of thought it was strange and I didn't see Apple talk about it or if John didn't write about it, I guess I didn't see that either. But are our subscriptions are they auto renew or are they like ask do they ask? I think they would have to be auto renew. Yeah, I don't like yeah. that either. That's how most subscriptions are. I hate yeah. most subscriptions. I guess, I guess, from from my perspective, the only app that I can think of that I'd be willing to pay a subscription for that's not like a standard app or or something like Spotify or Amazon, which Prime and Spotify Premium I already pay for, mm-hmm. um, it would be like Prompt, like the Panic suite of apps. Like I would pay a subscription fee for Prompt, Coda, and Transmit. Probably just Coda if 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 that were to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but the frequency with which I use those apps and the the like how crucial they are, I feel to to the way that I do things and my efficiency when I'm like like on the move and I need to make a quick change to something on a server. Like mm-hmm. I love that to death, and in fact, sometimes it feels like my preferred environment to interact with the server, um, which is like, can can you imagine saying that like ten years ago? No. <laughs> like oh, I SSH in from my iPad and everything's fine, um, but uh, I guess like that's I don't I don't necessarily like want to do that. Um, in the in the most base of economic senses, I do I do like that I buy it once, <laughs> um, but I think that that sort of app, if it would encourage Panic to keep keep working on it, if it would show them, hey, I I like this thing and I use it and it's important to me, I guess I would be okay with doing that too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I'm fi- I have a hard time finding what app I would. I'm looking at my phone here. I have a hard time finding what app I would prefer to pay in a subscription than I would prefer just to pay for it once for a long time. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess what I see is I see this as solving the uh, the text expander problem, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. But it also doesn't really solve it no. because it runs into the same problems that text expander, the text expander issue came up with. Right. But if there's if there's the next new thing and the only way to get it is to subscribe, I'm all right with that. I don't know um, if I'd be all right with that. I I see great difficulty in convincing me. Right. No. I and I I'm I'm with you there. But like I I feel like if there's something that I'm not currently thinking of, and for some reason the funding model they choose is a subscription, I would probably be all right with with doing that, depending on what the cost is, mm-hmm. right, and how relative how useful it would be to me. But it would have to replace, like, my text editor or something, right? It would have to be, like, a really awesome text editor that beats Coda for me. Because I'm not going to do it for a Twitter client. I'm not going to do it for a feed reader. Right. I'm not going to do it for a weather app. I'm not, I'm, That's for sure. What am I going to do it for? I don't, I'm running out of apps. It's like music. <laughs> but even then... But then, so, like, if there was another music player... Like, you know, yeah. I don't mean like a player, but I mean like an entity in the business of providing music streaming services. Right. Why yeah. would I not just pay them directly and just sign in? Why would exactly. I go through the platform? Yeah, exactly. I don't I, I think what you're getting at is kind of where I'm at, which is that there's probably not ever a, a reason why I would prefer that prefer an in-app purchase subscription yep. to uh, to just directly sending money to whoever makes things. Mm hmm. But um, the more optimistic part of me is like, well, I'd probably end up with it because that's just what somebody is going to need to do to survive at some point. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> which is which is no good. But I mean, like, I guess like Adobe Adobe does it, and they seem to be continuing to exist. Right, but Adobe did it because piracy was actually a, a real issue for them. It's true. <laughs> and and so by making the base price of their products fifty dollars for thirty days instead of yeah you know, a thousand dollars for 
two and a half years, they got people to pirate way less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think they also are suffering from fewer people using their product uh, in that, in that way though, because I mean, there, there's so many people I know and myself included who are rocking CS six or CS five. Yep. I, I luckily have CS six because it's like, well, this is the last good version of, of creative suite, which is to say it's the last version that I don't have to pay per month for. Right. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to hold on to that license for as long as, uh, as long as Adobe will let me yep. because um, there's no way that me being a non-designer by trade, um, though I do enjoy design. Um, like there's no way that I'm going to be able to, to say fifty dollars a month is a reasonable thing, unless I'm making like a thousand dollars a year or more off of that. Right, and I think that's the trade that they're looking for. Yeah. So for them, I, I, don't, I don't, don't. For them, I don't even think it's about sustainability. I think for true. them, it's about preventing unsustainability. That's true. That is true. Mm-hmm. Womp womp. I mean, nobody wants iOS apps or Android apps or apps in general to turn into, you know, seventy dollar things you buy once and get support for two years nobody wants that yeah but i i I think i would be more all right with that with with a panic app than with other things i would be more all right with it i'm not necessarily saying i would be all right with it but i almost all right yeah (laughs) yeah but i mean panic could ask me to do a somersault and uh i don't know light me on fire and i'd still like them (laughs) but you know (laughs) you know (laughs) But I think it's about time for us to do our final predictions before uh, before Monday happens. And I, if it's all right, I'll start out. Yeah. Uh, and I am going to optimistically say that there will be some sort of hardware. I'm going to leave it at that because I don't feel <laughs> confident at all in what that hardware will be. I sincerely hope it'll be a MacBook Pro. Yay. But I don't, I'm not, not necessarily 100% sure that that's the case. Um, Just remember the WWDC 2012 where they announced the Retina Display MacBook Pros. That exactly. Was a great, great presentation. So, see, somebody had this really this tweet that I found just very, uh, very weird. But said that it's it's WWDC. It's in the name. It's for developers. So it's going to be about software, not hardware. And I'm like, excuse thyself. This is this is developers use hardware too. They need to. Developers need hardware to write software. That's how software development works. I've never been been able to write software only with software. <laughs> turns um, out. It, turns out. You're not a computer. <laughs> I, I I do my best, but uh, yeah, no. Sometimes no. we wonder, though, you know. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, not yet. Mm-hmm. So I I do I do sincerely hope that there is hardware, but um, uh, and I do hope that hardware is a MacBook Pro, <laughs> but um, I'm I'm gonna I'm only comfortable leaving it at there will be hardware. Yeah, yeah I'm thinking there will be hardware. Also, I am pretty sure that if it's not a MacBook Pro. There'll still be some hardware because we saw an array of boxes somewhere in some picture on Twitter. I did. I didn't see that. OMG. I did not see this. Oh, well, do I have to go and reverse engineer my Twitter feed to figure out how to find a picture? I'll try. How recent was this? On the last day. WWDC boxes. And uh, the first one I found was boxes of coffee, which is all well and good. (laughs) But not quite that um, oh uh, these are all old tweets that's mm, no good uh, well my twitter feed does not want to cooperate so i'll get back to you on that one no worries oh i i, I just clicked on a forbes link just i have to restart my computer oops <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh man yeah, yeah, you you don't you don't. It's impossible. You know, Twitter is not for finding content that you saw recently. It's for just typing stuff into. Gotcha. Yeah. Womp womp. Oh well. Yeah, we'll, we'll track it down but, later. But okay, so in addition, in addition to the, our hope for the MacBook Pro, any any hope for our new Mac Pro? Uh, any other? The... Any other refreshing what? in general? I don't know about Mac. Has Intel released the? Uh... Xeon series CPUs from Haswell, or mm, what was it? I haven't what heard it? about it. Yeah, I haven't either. I don't I feel, know. We'll see. I feel like the Xeon Broadwell ones are out. I could be wrong, though. It, it is Intel, so they might be very behind on that. Yeah. Because... I mean, the, the Mac Pro could use new graphics, too. So yep. they could at least, Apple could at least do that. But it, knowing Apple, they would probably wait until they can do it all at once. And That's true. That is true. I guess, so... 
here's a hypothesis that comes from a different part of my brain. Um, the, this is the this is the the branding and consistency part of my brain. Uh, I bet if they release a new MacBook Pro, they would also release a new Mac Pro. That makes sense. Mm. Although, if they don't have parts for it, it'll be hard. That's true. That's true. Which is why if they can't release both, they might do nothing. But I don't want to. I don't want to think about that. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's tough. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. I'm really curious what's going to happen. So but what about, what about the lower casing of the names of things? We already have iOS I think and the concatenation plus lower casing. I think it's hundred percent definitely going to happen. Yeah, there I was think, in I the release it's... of the ads app store review times and subscriptions. Yep. There was a reference to lowercase Mac OS, mm-hmm. yep. and that. It's been fixed, so I think it's definitely. A thing. Yeah, I think that's that's for sure. So do do you th- do you think it's a positive change at all? Do you take a Syracusean attitude? I uh, you know I'm I'm gonna have to be pretty neutral on this. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Car puns, podcast <laughs> puns. This is so meta. <laughs> so I I don't really care either way, as long as the numbering remains consistent. What number should this be, by the way? I don't remember. 11 or 10.12. Okay. As long as it's 10.12, I don't care what they really call the front part of it. So what if they what if they call it Mac OS 11? No, so that is not. I think they would 11. wait till iOS 11. Oh. Uh, uh, do you think, it. Or do you think they would, they would pull a React or an inverse React? Absolutely not. And, and, and get rid of the 10 no. and make it Mac OS 12? No. I don't know. <laughs> That'd be interesting. That's insane. We'll have to see what happens, but I think using Mac OS is good. It really unifies the lineup of operating systems they make. Yeah, yeah, and I'm okay well, the- with that. I think it's fine. I, it's, I mean, it's been OS 10 for years, and people will still just call it OS 10, no matter, no matter what they call it. It's still OS 10. I guess uh, one of the things that's kind of a little bit uh, weird to me is that the shape of all these words, Watch OS, Mac OS, iOS, uh, seems to match pretty well with. Um, the uh, shape of the words of, of that that describe the place where I am working, space one fifty, because the lowercase and then taller taller things at the end. Mm. Um, so that's a little bit weird for me to see, <laughs> but you know, I, I think you're right that that's that it's probably going to be all right for 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 all that for for consistency purposes, I guess. Yeah, I think so. So I'll just briefly say that I've seen rumors on Siri on macOS. There's someone found that you can ask Siri uh, open the settings window or something like that, and it Siri replies with, sorry, there's no application finder installed or something like that. Hmm. Also, iMessage on Android. Now, what about that? That's pretty cool. Gruber I would be just, all right with it. I, I think that would be good. Gruber just tweeted a link about it on Dark yeah, Fireball. Yeah, he believes in and, it. Um, he makes a good point where if Apple's becoming more of a services company, iMessage is a service, and you got to have it on Android if you want it to really be successful. So that 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 is a really interesting thing. Um, I never thought I would see the day where I would say that would happen. Would you use it, Ryan? Yeah. Yes, I, yes I would. It's not like I would get rid of Slack or get rid of Hangouts or get rid of any apps on my phone. I would just have it. Right. Yeah. Right? So I, I, I would um, pretty much push everybody I know just towards it then. Because then it wouldn't right. matter if we have an Android phone or an uh, iOS phone. It would just work, and it would be great. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Also, we've heard the rumor of, see one of you put the link in here, of 5K Thunderbolt display with integrated GPU. Yeah. I don't think that's uh, coming. You, you don't think so? I don't think it'll be here till the fall, at least. But I would love it if it were to happen. In fact, I think we're just gossiping about such things at work. I think they would only do it if they release new hardware with Thunderbolt 3. Agreed. So, if it's released... I think we'll also be getting a new MacBook Pro and Mac Pro. So oh, is, for sure. do we know if Thunderbolt the... 3 is ready then? Is that is that real? Is it ready? I believe so. Let me ask the internet. Okay. I know Krabby Lake, the successor to Skylake, has further Thunderbolt 3 support. But I think Skylake can drive it as well. It's kind of interesting that it uses USB Type-C connectors too, which makes it seem like there might be... Yeah, type Type C is the new the new Thunderbolt shape, I guess. Well, Thunderbolt, you know, used Mini Display Port, so they're just using old other connectors. Yeah, and which is pretty smart, I would say. I, I mean, mostly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it looks it looks like it does exist. So Intel does offer like 
versions of the controller to a, be included in things, but it looks like um, that that hasn't been integrated. Clearly, hasn't been integrated into Max yet, but it's been all right since Skylake. It's been okay. Since so it's a Skylake so thing. Now, well, that's okay. possible then. Because I know at Computex, which was a couple weeks ago, I think. Yeah. There was um, quite a bit of talk on vendors offering laptops, but with the ability to have an external GPU. Right. And we t- we all talked about this somewhere, although I don't remember where. Where was that? Slack? Is that, is that right? Yeah, I think, it, yeah, Slack. So um, my problem with it is that, sure, yes, we can have now, suddenly, with Thunderbolt, the ability to have laptops with okay graphics and then put the real graphics card in the thing that needs them, which is the monitor. But that 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 poses the problem that now the 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 laptop has to be more expensive in order to include support for it, and that means only expensive things will ever have support for it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That is definitely problematic. <laughs> and you know, it's not like a, a Chromebook will ever need to hook up to a 5K display. I mean, let's let's just Until be clear. Will. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> but okay. but but maybe you know a five hundred dollar laptop, you know, a regular Windows computer. It should be able to. Right. Yeah. That's all. Uh, agreed. <laughs> yes. I, 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 I put a link to a Hair Force One thing. I don't know if this is real. <laughs> yes. Oh, that Twitter account is definitely fake, but I love it. Yeah, but the, the picture in question, I don't know. I, I can't, I'm struggling to find the source of that picture. The unedited version. Is it a game controller of shorts? I mean, that's what it, that's what it's pointing to. It because seems strange to be a red Apple, Apple logo. Yeah, that doesn't yeah, seem like that. Doesn't thing. generally fit into the Apple brand. Yeah, maybe. But what other color would it be? White. Yeah. White. Obvi. They wouldn't. They would never put a white icon on a game controller. Maybe. I don't know. Unless they did. Um. I don't know. So there was um. I don't have a link for it, but there was talk of a um of a Siri like standalone Echo thing. Yeah. Any thoughts? I doubt it. Yeah, I kind of doubt it. What what data would it pull from? That's a good question. Uh, you'd have to pair it to your Wi-Fi network somehow, and that would just make everybody sad. And then really it would have sad. to pair to your phone. And then yeah. what, what phones, if you have multiple in the house, what what does it do? What would it listen to? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course, I guess it could be sort of like the watch in the way that it just, you know, you the app provides an extension and the extension pushes data to it. Yeah. But but why is that useful? I would just prefer to use Siri on my phone or my yeah, watch. It, yeah. That's, that's kind of the thing, isn't it? For, for me, my watch is already much more useful to me than Alexa would be. Right. But that's because I have a watch. <laughs> Brandon, any hopes for a watch OS three? Oh, uh, I'm sh- I'm sure it's coming. I'm sure it'll be there. Um, if it's not there now, it'll be there pretty soon after, and it'll be like, oh yeah, also a watch. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean watch OS. Um, but if it's, I'd be surprised if it weren't tied to the I- iOS ten. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess I'm not sure what else it would. I, I can tell you what I'd wish it would have. I don't really have any uh, insight into whether these would actually happen. I wish it would have um, better uh, online control of speakers connected to the watch. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That's a thing that I would really appreciate if I could play music from my phone while I have headset a headset connected to my watch, so it would pass through like so. Yeah. Um, right now, that doesn't seem like a thing that that happens. If the the headset has to be connected to the phone, you can tr- control it from the watch, but you can't. Uh, have the speakers paired to the phone through the watch, um, mm-hmm. but I would really like that. I have I would, my uh, uh, my Bluetooth headphones. I have Bluetooth four point two, so they can connect to two devices at once. Mm-hmm. So I connect to the watch and the phone. Nice. So at the same time, it defaults to the phone, but I can go to the watch and just change the source in the music app to be just from the watch, and then that uh-huh. connects to the headphones. So that's, that's what I awesome. do. But it's a little annoying that I have to go to the music app. Uh, force touch on there to change the source it just takes a minute or two to switch and i wish yeah. it was a little faster like i, think, I wish you could mm-hmm. have it default and you just do i don't know i don't not necessarily two apps but it's just force touching switching it just takes too too long i think agreed i feel like we need some sort of sonos controller sort of way to manage bluetooth devices a little bit better because I, I i i'm with you i wish i could just pair my bluetooth headphones to everything i own and reassign them as i wish i really wish i could just 
have the phone turn them on. So I have a bunch of Bluetooth devices, but I always have to flip the switch or press the button to turn them on first. Mm-hmm. I wish I could just have the phone tell it, hey, I'm here. Let me connect to you. That so you want yet better. another standard that wakes up the Bluetooth card. No, see, Bluetooth, Sony... Bluetooth LE should be able to handle it on its own. And okay. see, Sony has had a way to kind of hack around this. So my headphones had this with NFC. I don't have a darn thing that can activate it. Um, I guess my watch theoretically could, but I know it doesn't. It, it, the, the software is not there. Yeah. Um, but you essentially, if even if the headphones are off, you can use the NFC to wake it up. Mm-hmm. That sounds that's that would be okay with me. Not perfect, but okay. Right, right. So ap- apparently, what you do is you just like, uh, you know, go all 2001: A Space Odyssey and smash your phones into the headphones, and eventually it connects. <laughs> um, but I haven't, I haven't uh, had the chance to test it. Yeah. So dubious as to well as to how well it works much like the uh sony wi-fi uh photo transfer app which i was very very happy about for the longest time because i was just like oh look at me i'm able to just set my camera out next to my ipad and transfer photos to it and in like two hours they were all transferred um but then i realized oh hey wait with usb uh 2.0 speeds i can beat that by a long shot so i got the little lightning uh to to sd card adapter and now magically all my photos essentially instantly transfer um, nice. So there's a little aside on uh, Sony hacks, as much as I love Sony. <laughs> well, that sounds pretty pretty good. Yeah, I guess, I guess the point the point with that is is like all uh, it, Sony tries a lot of those things that end up uh, being things that we actually want, but they're always just kind of a little bit off base. So hopefully Apple will find some way to to make that happen with their all their smart home stuff too. That would be cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. all their ho- smart home stuff. That sounds like there's a lot, but I don't know if there all, is. All none of it. <laughs> yeah, all none of it, really. But I'm sure it's coming. It's going to be here soon, so probably. So any, any other predictions? Um, let's see. What, 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 can there be any, any, any big stuff for iOS this year, or do we just... Do I've we seen just... a couple like wishes around like uh, better access for third-party keyboards, so not just all or nothing a little more in line rather than having to go to the settings app. Mm-hmm. Small improvements like that. Um, I have heard a thing or two about like a global dark mode on iOS. <laughs> that would be I nice. Saw some reference in some framework somewhere to maybe that, which I think would be kind of cool. But I don't know. I feel like not a lot has leaked out other than Siri on the Mac, maybe iMessage on Android. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not really uh, aware of any significant changes to um to ios that i'm super excited about which is kind of weird because in previous years i would feel like i i did have some kind of things like um you know like the flux clone night shift um yeah. stuff like that but um yeah i'm not i'm not seeing it right now yeah well we'll have to see what what they what they tell us about right i guess streaming live i guess there is one more thing about uh about ios though that is this is going to be ios version 10 yeah, we'll have Mac OS 10, 10.12, and iOS 10. I'm wondering if along, like, so my branding brain is all like, I wonder if to coincide with the change to lowercase m Mac OS and lowercase i iOS, which has been the way it has been for ages, and, and watch OS, if they will use that as an opportunity to um, to change the numbering scheme, which I know I kind of alluded to earlier. I, I hope they don't. I don't think anything they're doing here is worth the changing of the number scheme right now. That's true. I mean, unless it's, and I, I don't think there will ever be, but unless it's like a re- complete rewrite, I don't think it's necessary. Mm-hmm. I think because the, the reason Mac OS X in the original in the early 2000s was big and different because they rewrote it. So it was a massive change that justified using the Roman numeral 10 because it's... But- that's but true. I don't, know. I don't. I don't see them using Roman numeral ten for iOS. I almost see them removing the Roman numeral in the future, still calling it Mac OS ten. But I don't know. Oh, I don't know. It's tricky. I don't. I don't. Secret. For 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 OS ten, I don't think anybody really cares. If people just call it Mac OS, then they are then they're okay with it because people always, almost always, like ninety nine percent of the time, have the latest version. That's true. The one thing, the one thing though, right, is that like back back in the day, system six, seven, eight, nine, 
um, th you know, th there was a there was a long period between those releases, but I don't believe that many of those were complete rewrites, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's true. So I'm 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 wondering if, and I think you're right that the reason why we've stuck with OS 10 for so long is because this is this is definitely the same like lineage, right? It's it def it's definitely based on the same version, but I'm wondering if. Like I, I feel like they can't keep that Roman numeral around for much longer. I feel like they can. Um, I mean, the real time, the real time to have done the the non Romanness would have been when they switched from PowerPC to to Intel. To, to Intel. Yeah. They didn't Agreed. do it then, and that was a profound change that took a intermediate, you know, sort of compilation layer to get around. That's true. Yeah, absolutely. And they, I, I agree. or even Yosemite when they did a big design change that could have fit pretty well with changing the branding of it as well. But they didn't do it there. And Yosemite was 10.10, .10, so traditionally it would have gone to 11, but so what what if what if they did something else major but it was kind of under the un, under the hood kind of like rewriting major components in Swift. New file system? <gasps> yeah, exactly. Or a file system change, right? So stuff like that. Um, so I, again, like unless they do it all at once, which nobody would like, that's true. Unless they do it all at once, I don't think it's merited. Yeah. So unless they change the UI, and nobody would want that. Unless they change the file system, which nobody wants, and yeah, people unless, want that. Well, yes, people want that, but not all at once. So unless they change <laughs> all of those things at once, then then what? I mean, it's just another point update. Or yeah. what, or what if Phil Schiller's team just owns the universe? And just decides they don't they don't like the Roman numeral anymore. <laughs> well, so they're just going to call it ten then. I think if they redo it, now is so. the time that they will because they're already changing it from OS ten to Mac OS. So I don't think they would rebrand it twice in the number yeah. of closely years. I think this is our time. If it's going to happen, we'll see what they do. Gotcha. People are That's still going to call think. it OS X, OS ten. Oh, they're still OS X. They're, so wrong. They're, they're still going to call it. OS X or OS 10, regardless of what it's really called. <laughs> it could be yeah. OS 41 and it's still going to be OS 10. <laughs> gotcha. So the way, I'll, I'll, another way of thinking about it is the versions of Java, like we're on Java 8 right now, but technically, it's technically 1.8. Technically it's 1.8. Yeah. 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 And so it, as it turns out, and I didn't know this, Java Sun was the beginner, the starter of Semver. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Who knew? Interesting. Because it's all backwards compatible all the way down. The the yeah. largest breakers of, of Semver, sort of, but also the largest preservers yeah. of Semver. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how that works. Yep. 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 Well indeed. I think that's about all I've got on WWDC. It'll be cool to see what happens. I don't know if yeah. I will be streaming it or not because I'm going to be um in the office, but um I will definitely try to pipe that stuff into my ears. Because... Well, me and my unemployed self will uh, <laughs> carry the weight for you. I I don't. I, can you stream it on Windows? I don't. I don't think you can. Uh, there might be a way that you can pipe it through. Oh wait, you get the link okay. through VLC. I can I cheat. Yes, I can do that with with VLC or libav if you're feeling so adventurous. Ooh, Ooh. I'm not that adventurous. I need. I require UI. All right. I thought um, I would end this real quick by just saying a cool app I found the other day. Not the other day. June first was in it. Was updated last. I don't know. End of May. Called Term here. So it's a, a Finder share extension kind of thing. So you can be in a folder in Finder, or right click on a directory, and open a terminal to that location. And you can choose which terminal app. So terminal I term, or you just browse to the application. That sounds awesome. In fact, that that replicates a feature that I really miss on my Macs from uh from the linux realm because i know that gnome uh depending yes. on how you have it configured will yep. allow you to open a terminal from yeah. a location and i love that in combination with the open dash capital f uh command and terminal like those two things are things that i funny story yeah. even yeah. windows 10 has that available by default in, really? in, in explorer on windows 10 you open it you go to any directory you want here i'm in the pictures directory you go to file it says open command prompt here, and then it will give you two mm. choices if you hover long enough: command prompt or command prompt as administrator. Hmm. That's awesome. Nice. And and of course the flavors for PowerShell, but nobody wants mm -hmm. to talk about that. I I used Total Finder before El Capitan, and that had a open terminal here feature. But with uh, system integrity protection, uh, I would have to 
turn that off in order to use Total Finder. So I stopped using Total Finder. Oh no. I think it was Total Finder. Maybe yeah. it was yeah. I think that's yeah. So I'm glad this is here. I would I'd been playing around with some Apple script or something to try and make a sh service, but I never was able to get something to work quite how I wanted. So this fills in the gap. Right on. I'm definitely going to be taking a look at this. Uh, certainly, if, if not on my personal Mac, on my Mac at work, because um, yes, that is that is much the needed. Um, I like being able to move seamlessly between GUI and terminal uh, as best I can. And that is a thing that looks like it would help me do that. So yes. it is much appreciated. Well, I think it's about that time uh, where we discuss our new Twitter followees, the people that we've been uh, thinking are cool on the Twitter sphere at the moment. Brian, mm -hmm. it looks like you've got a couple here. I'm very interested to hear what they are. I followed exactly three accounts in the last recorded. Oh, the first one would be Computer Facts, uh, stupid little tweets about computer things. So uh, the one that I saw that made me follow the account was, don't forget to water your computer or it won't grow. <laughs> so true. So uh, support your local computer. Um, it's another good one here. No one has know. ever died from a fatal error so far. I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, using a computer is more fun with friends. Delete all the files on your computer before you travel to make it lighter. <laughs> Encryption is just a fancy word for good manners. So um, tweets like that, a good fun. It's not too often, maybe once a day or every couple of days. I like this one a lot. Haha, <laughs> remember when the computers were the size of a room? Now they cover the surface of the planet are, and are in low orbit, so way to go, everyone. Nice. <laughs> That's a good one. So I also com uh, followed Kama AI, which is George Hotz, or Geo Hotz, um, AI company for making a self-driving car. He is famously known for hacking the PlayStation 3 and jailbreaking uh, the, I or the iPhones. Yep, indeed. Very smart guy. This blew up uh, a couple months ago when he showed, I don't remember who it was, someone about what he's been working on. So Right. It was a Bloomberg thing, I believe. A Bloomberg yeah. post. Right on. That is going to be interesting to see what he does with that, for sure. Yeah. And he's just released, or is about to release, an Android app that you can mount in your dashboard to record data and send back to Comma AI. And so then you can... Uh, rack up miles and the top people who contribute the most with it I think will be rewarded he said <laughs> nice so probably free kits he can train right? his uh you can train his Lexus <laughs> yes. that's awesome good for him and you lastly Lexus and I will give you I follow, I'll give you many riches <laughs> continue <laughs> lastly I followed electric.co uh they're a blog in the nine to five Mac nine to five Google company um, following electric transportation industry and green ecosystem, Tesla, Solar City, and more. So just keeping up with my electric green energy ecosystem, I guess. Right on. That is super cool. It's uh, one piece of news in that whole nine to five Mac realm. Did you guys hear about how uh, the, the the big uh, Darwin? Mark Gurman. Yeah, yeah Mark the guy. Gurman, yep. He left. I did hear yeah. that. I didn't. Where did he go? I don't recall, but I think it was announced at some point. Let's see, Mark German. I think he went to like a TV or something. Oh, Bloomberg. You went to Bloomberg. Of course you did. Oh, okay. that's nice. Bloomberg is good. Yep. Cool, cool. Well, I've got some more follow followees too. Um, I followed more than three people uh, keeping up with uh, with tradition. Uh, this first person is Chris Espinoza. He oh, yeah. for Apple. He is the eighth employee of Apple. I've followed him for a while. Yep, yep. I recommend he is, it. He is a very, very, very cool person. Um, and he tweets about a lot of cool things, including but not limited to uh, general tech things and uh, old Apple stuff, which, of course, is uh, on brand. I appreciate that quite a bit. Then Keith Kirsten, who is a Code for America fellow in 2016, and uh, is just a generally interesting person to uh, see the words he has to say. Um, yes, I'm scrolling through his Twitter feed right now, and it's very, uh, very entertaining. <laughs> um, then finally, uh, as one of my coworkers, uh, Mike Anderson, who is a very awesome person, but is proclaimed on his, uh, on his Twitter page that he is a dad joke thought leader uh, at Space 150, which sounds about right. Um, but he's also a really awesome person from the perspective of the number of amazing languages that he uh, learns and picks up. He's actually going to give a talk on Elm to the group uh, that I work for, 
and I am super excited for that. Um, I had the chance to talk with him a little bit about Elm a little while ago, and um, it it seems like a really cool language, and it seems like he's done a couple of really good Elm. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, a couple of really great deep dives into it, so I'm looking forward to seeing what that uh, what that turns into. Yep. Um, so if you're at all interested in Elm, Rust, Ruby, or any of those things, he is an awesome person to follow, which is one reason why I follow him. Also yeah. because he's just generally a cool person. Elm is really cool. They have some really good uh, technology for explaining uh, errors that you make. Mm -hmm. Yep. Actually, he wrote he wrote a really awesome post on this um, called Putting Down Elm. And I will put it in the thingy that puts things places. Um, <laughs> It's a, it's a pretty short post, um, but he says, quite often I'll be in the middle of working on something while riding the train, yep. and I have to get out of my stop. The more focused I am, the more I feel being pulled away from things. Um, I don't have this fear with Elm, and that's because the compiler has lots of cool things that uh, allow you to to kind of see where it work, work, where you left off, uh, which is quite... Uh, like that, That's one of the side effects, I think, of, of it being Haskell-based, from what I hear. Yep. Okay. Um, and I'm I'm really kind of uh, interested in, in trying it out at some point because of that whole uh, that whole functional fun, fun stuff from there. <laughs> yeah, I I don't person I don't think I've looked into Elm more than just reading the you know language syntax one time, but right. from what I've read of people talking about it, this the, the however they're doing this air handling, it's not even air handling. It's you know the compiler is telling you exactly what you did wrong. You know, instead of just saying you're missing a semicolon on line 25, it actually tells you, did, you know, you're supposed to put semicolons before and after this thing. And this thing is a thing because it's that and so and so. Um, so it's a little more documentation with the errors. Yeah. Oh, cool. I, I love that. And when, when, I've, when I was reading a bit about this, I was reminded of a little project that um, that um, node apparition, TJ Holloway check, uh, did that documents things. I don't remember what it's called, but it uses the test suite to document things, which I thought was a really interesting way to go about it. It's not the it's not the exact same thing for sure, but that sort of um, that sort of greater documentation of things that go wrong than just saying uh, it should have a semicolon here mm -hmm. is, I think, uh, a, a really a really interesting development in the kind of tools we use. And I think it's something right. that's going to help people, more people. Uh, get into this field right yep. and i think that's that's going to be important and awesome even though haskell still still haskell yeah no haskell for me but this is cool yep yeah hmm. and oh it's the doc it's the doc reporter for mocha that's what it is it's not anything special it's just mocha <laughs> and <laughs> um i also don't follow any people on twitter i i, re I remain consistent in the people that i follow for years and years so we'll have to try a different week for me to get followers all right, we'll try it next time, yes. Yeah. <laughs> It'll happen. So, uh, let's see. Uh, WWDC in a few days, and um, yeah. Look out for a Nexus special. That's what we're going to be doing. Indeed, indeed. Mm -hmm. It's going to be good. So, where can we find you on the internet? Yes, Brandon, where can we find you? Well, you can find me just about anywhere, but more likely than not on the Twitters, where I am Brandon underscore MN. I am coincidentally also that same username at other things like Peach, Twitter, Facebook. No, not Facebook. Uh, Instagram. Um, what other social networks are there? Well, I'm, Peach is I'm not at... a social network anymore. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, uh, I'm also at Bran on Talk Show. Come start a talk show with me. I don't have any friends on Talk Show anymore, but that's okay. Um, you can also find me on my website, which is brandon.mn. Um, I will probably be updating that blog at some point when I have something to write about. Um, but until then, I'll just wait for Brian, to, uh, for Ryan to publish his and for Brian to publish his, because, uh, I know they've got some cool stuff in yon yonder pipelines. Simmering, um, I believe is what I called it. Yes. Sim simmering in yonder pipelines. Um... And then I think that's about it. Otherwise, you will find me roaming the streets of Minneapolis or mostly my office um, because that is where I work. Very good. All right. Well, you can find me on Twitter at underscore Brian Mitchell underscore or at bban4789 um, or my website, brianm.me. And probably uh, most interesting on GitHub at bban4789 at my BPM project slash BPM where my um, iOS app is 
being worked on. Right. A, new, a new framework, and uh, currently it's crashing. I'm having problems loading a table somehow. But uh, oh. it's that was yesterday. We'll see if I can fix it today or tomorrow or this week. Progress will be made. Very good. And of course, you can find me just about everywhere, especially on the Twitter at Ryanmar, and of course, on various websites that are all protected by HTTPS, such <laughs> as contextual.link, uh, adept.work, and soon, well, you can def- definitely find me at ryanrampersad.com, and soon, blogs.ryanrampersad.com. That S is going to get everybody, but it's going to be great. Right. We have blog forward to blogs. No, I'm going to keep blog just where it is. Never use it again. No. I don't want to touch I don't, I don't want to touch that WordPress. Right. Right. Um, well, thanks for um, coming on the show this week. Yeah. It's always yeah. always Until good. Next time. Yep. Well, have a good one. Yeah, you all too. You too.